proceed in this service in this ministry the presence of God is of utmost importance to us because the Bible has made it clear it's not by might it's not by power but it is by my spirit it's not a formularistic thing Christianity is not a formula it's not you trying to walk it out by yourself kind of no 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 never has been Paul said it is no longer I that live it but Christ who lives in me and the life I now live I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself so it, it, it's always a life that is powered powered by the Holy Spirit but if you don't know the freshness of the Spirit there will be nothing to power you so there always has to be that that freshness from God amen somebody I don't know how some people survive without that I can't and we're, we're challenging you regularly not just while we're in church but what you see us do here take it home get those worship materials lock yourself in your room kneel down lift up your hands worship God God told me many years ago he said tell your people private worship is more important than public worship if you don't do this on your own at home when you come here it's all show performance and you can't deceive God though if it's not coming out of your heart God knows when you lift up that hand God pastor say lift up the hand it's not coming from here you can't fool him you don't fool yourself so let's begin to do these things especially the Bible says as we see the end coming you must be current in the things of God amen that's what keeps us going amen somebody I tell you also the, to, tonight I'm going to be sharing on prayer this is our last or every time towards the last weekend of the month is our focus on prayer so this entire weekend the focus will be on prayer and again that's something we want to teach here and sometimes you know people get a bit off balance you know yes we teach victory we teach this and that but we teach prayer amen because a praying soul is a soul that is close to God if you're not if you're not a praying soul you're far I don't care what you do this thing again is not a formula amen somebody and then watch your life if things that you used to do with a walkover before now becomes a struggle something is declining I say it again if things you used to do before that was so easy to do that was so easy to move all of a sudden it becomes a struggle in your life something is declining and you need to check yourself because that's not the way it used to be and prayer is, is, a, is a call of the soul to draw near to its maker and it's so important amen somebody <laughs> hallelujah quickly open your bibles will be to john 16 and also john 16 i'm going to look at first john you know chapter 5 we're going to look at two scriptures and i'll give you the title later i've just been rolling this around in my spirit now prayer still remains so many what you might call an enigma it's so it, it, it's so inviting yet for many it's so mysterious it shouldn't be so we go back to the bible and say what does the bible say about prayer we're going to look at specific things today and i, I tell you my 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 and and uh, these are the things that I believe must be at the back of your mind even before you kneel down things that you know that you know that you know glory be to God that this is the way it's supposed to be John chapter 16 let's look at two scriptures maybe three verses 23 and 24 John 16 23 and 24 listen to this listen to this Jesus said this and in that day you shall ask me nothing verily verily I say unto you whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name he will give it to you hitherto have you asked nothing in my name ask and you shall what ask and you shall what that what may happen that your joy may be full wow ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full 
And what I see here is that prayer is deliberate. And because it's deliberate, it gets a deliberate result. It's not, it's not something you play around with, you know. You know, for years we've heard, oh, let's go to the prayer meeting. Oh, we have prayer meeting tonight. You know, and people just say that and go there, spend an hour, spend two hours, get in the activity of prayer. But it's always amazing to me for years how people will come away from the same prayer meeting. They've been praying for two hours and on their way home, you listen to their conversation. And you wonder, why on earth did we bother to go in the first place? They just went to perform a duty. There was no expectation. Write this down. Prayer that does not have expectation is not prayer. Because it's something done on purpose. It's very important. Like Brother Hagen will, will say to us, Kenneth Hagen, before he died, he said, Some people will pray and pray and cry and cry. And at the end, when he says, In Jesus' name, he says, Amen. And he says, Sister, how is the situation? Is it going to be good? He says, Well, Pastor, I hope so. I hope so. Why did we pray? We pray that it will be good. Amen, somebody. We're not hoping and uh, after we finish praying, we pray that it will happen. But it's amazing. That's the way a lot of Christians are. And with all the pressures and all the problems of, of today, my God, people are even getting more and more uncertain about prayer. And I believe that's one of the reasons the attitudes of, of Christians to prayer today is like, well, eh, we know Jesus is coming, you know. <laughs> So they're just living things. Maybe when Jesus comes soon, he will deliver us. No, no, the man said, occupy this place. Amen, somebody. That means he put an, an element of, of, of control in the capacity of the church. He didn't say run out. He didn't say be afraid. He said occupy. Yes, the enemy is here, but occupy. Rule in the midst of your enemies. That's what he said. There's an element of authority there. But if you don't know that, it will be the opposite. So we're going to look at some things today. And it's so important that God wants us to have that confidence of coming to him. Coming deliberately to him. Coming to speak to him purposely. And knowing fully well that he will hear just like he promised. And he will answer. Can somebody say amen? Amen. It's so important. John 16 again, verse 23 and 24. In that day you shall ask me nothing. He said, Jesus has been with his disciples, and when he was with them physically, when they needed anything, they will go to him. Now he's leaving them, he's going back to heaven, and Jesus delegates those people and says, Look, when the time comes when I'm not here, I won't be here for you to ask me. But whatsoever you shall ask the heavenly father in my name he delegated the authority of answered prayer into his name and he guaranteed that whatsoever shall ask the father in my name not in your name but in my name in the name of Jesus the father will do what he will give it to us he will give it to us. Oh, glory be to God. He that to have you ask nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Hey, hallelujah. So one of the keys, definitely what I see in the New Testament to answer prayer is faith in the name of Jesus. That's what I'm going to be talking about a little bit tonight. One of the the, the, the key is to answer prayer in the New Testament is that there must be faith in the name of Jesus because that's the delegated source Jesus says I'm no longer going to be here I'm going back to heaven but I leave my name with you and when you come before the heavenly father the creator of heaven and, earth, and say father we ask it in the name of your son Jesus Jesus said the father will hear and he will answer. So there must be something about that name 
and we're going to see some things in a few minutes also first john chapter 5 let's look at that oh i tell you this last days when people are backing out of prayer or many are merely running to pray out of fear i remember a story i heard many years ago I'll never forget it people were in trouble christians they were running up and down running here running there and when everything failed nobody else to run to one of them said why don't we try prayer why don't we try prayer after every other thing failed no prayer should have been the first choice are you getting what i'm saying now that also shows you just how much confidence they had in it they're christians they go to church they go to prayer meetings but when things happen and like it happens to many of us that's always the last thing at the back of our mind you know until it becomes critical ah now we call the pastor call the brethren call the intercessory prayer team but you know prayer let, let me say this to you prayer is a form of attack on the enemy so if the enemy is attacking you your first line of attack against the enemy is prayer prayer is not a defense I'll say that again prayer your praying is not a defense prayer from what I see in the Bible is an attack so you don't wait to be attacked you attack back and that's why a response a primary response to prayer in your life as a Christian is so vital it's not sitting down watching and when the enemy is beating you and plummeting you and you're almost dried I say, ah, why don't we pray no 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 you don't give the enemy the opportunity first and then you wonder why he didn't do nothing first john chapter 5 14 and 15 i love this scripture and this is the confidence that we have in him and online that word confidence confidence means this is something we know this is not something we're thinking about and i, I notice this when you use the word confidence it doesn't matter how big or small the problem is it doesn't matter whether it started yesterday or it's been there for five years confidence works regardless of amount or time once you develop confidence you develop confidence and you maintain that confidence it's not it's not regarding ah this is so big this problem is so huge this has been there for 10 years no 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 and this is the confidence that we have in him hallelujah again that's also important because underline that confidence in him now let me shock you about this that's the point i want to make here your confidence and this is very very scratchy your confidence before god or to get god to move for you is not to be in your prayers your confidence is to be in him are you getting what i'm saying i'll say that again god never asked us to have confidence in our prayers but to have confidence in him who invited us to pray because if you don't understand that you get to this place where you'll be thinking oh we pray for four hours oh we pray for four days oh we pray for 30 days that's why god is going to answer the prayer no 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 it's not that you can pray for one minute and god can answer the prayer because your confidence is not in the prayer it's in the one who gave us the authority and invited us to pray can somebody say amen, amen. And that brings us back to this point how much do you know him who has invited us to pray and says that ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full you know one of the things i, I notice even in natural life is this if you got a call today that so and so ask you to come tomorrow morning and receive something a gift now as glad as you may be that somebody is offering you a gift I bet you the next question will be how much do I know this person and I bet you two things can happen if you know the person very well you will wake up early to go there but if you don't really know the person very well 
as much as you are rejoicing that he says come and collect something even when you get there your leg will not move too fast why because the knowledge between the relationship will also affect how quick you reach out to receive this is important if you know the person well maybe you know when you get there and say, i'm the one i'm here to receive my gift but if you don't know the person well you'll be there all right but you may be parambulating the floor outside for a while you know because the approach is not too clear this is the confidence that we have in him hallelujah so a good knowledge of God, the workings of God, what God has already done, what Jesus has already done for us, is a vital part of answered prayer. If you don't know that, that's what helps you to build the confidence. I know Jesus died for, we're teaching that series, redeemed from the curse of the law. Christ hath redeemed me from the curse of the law because he became a curse for me. Because it is written, cursed is the one who hangs on the tree so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon me. When I know that, I know that. Tell me which curse will come and stand in front of me when I know Jesus has taken it out of the way. I'll reject it. I'll kick it out of my way. It has no right to come near me. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because you know something. Now if you don't know, you'll be wondering what to do with it. And sometimes that's the way it is when it comes to approaching the Lord in prayer. If there is no confidence, all you will do is to say a lot of words that don't even make sense to you. It's possible. Many of us have been to churches where we pray a lot. And at the end of the prayer, we don't know what we said. And if you don't know what you said, I doubt if God knew what you said. <laughs> Amen. Because it's got to make sense to you for, for God to say, yes, I know what they're saying. So it's important. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will. Now, underline that again. We're going to take some words. Ask anything. So God didn't say, ask only some things. Some things I can't handle. Some things I can't. No, no, no. He said, if we will ask anything. But it must be according to what? His will. Wow. That's all. Ask anything according to his will. He heareth us. God hears. And verse 15 says, And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that what? that we desired of him and so notice something even even very interesting here bible begins here with the word confidence in him take for example let me give you an example go me to jeremiah chapter 33 jeremiah chapter 33 look at something that's so interesting here this is what god said to us concerning prayer jeremiah 33 3 Mm, my, 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 my. Two and three. Thus said the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He's the one that called us to come. He's the one that gave us the invitation to come. And he openly boasts about a call and I will answer. And there's got to be a place where you develop confidence in the one who said call. Amen somebody. That even if you feel you don't want to call. Or you feel the things that are happening to you are so, so, so humongous that they're overwhelming you. Because you know he said call and he will answer. It's enough to motivate you to go ahead and do it anyway. Amen, somebody. I love scriptures like this. This is the confidence that we have in him. Call and I will answer. And not only that, I will show you. Mm, my, my, my. 
another scripture we see there is Hebrews chapter I believe it's chapter uh, chapter 4 yes Hebrews chapter 4 let's look at another scripture here and we could go through the Bible you know Old Testament New Testament and we find that this issue of God openly giving us an invitation to approach him to ask for his assistance to ask him to do only what he God can do for us individually as a family as a church and he will do it my goodness Hebrews chapter 4 my 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 oh glory be to God uh, is that what I need uh, da, 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 da. Yes, Hebrews chapter 4. Let, let's start from verse uh, let's start from verse 40. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession or our confession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities but was in all points what tempted like as we are yet without sin verse 16 let us therefore oh glory be to God can Hagen taught us many years ago so when you see the word therefore find out what it is there for because nobody start a uh, sentence with therefore you don't get a letter in the mail and the first paragraph is therefore no it must be there for something let us therefore why on the basis of what has already happened we have a high priest he's gone on to heaven his name is Jesus he knows everything about you inside out hallelujah and he's on your side let us therefore come how boldly Underline that word again. That's another thing about prayer, my friend. Biblical prayer is bold prayer. Biblical prayer is not just prayer trying to find out, well, can, can we do it or can't we do it? No, because there is a reason behind it. There is a person behind it who gives us the confidence to come. Oh, glory be to God. Let us therefore come boldly to where? Unto the throne of grace. What is the throne of grace? The throne of God. The throne of God's mercy. Uh, God told me one time, he said, the throne, the throne of grace is the high court of the universe. You know, we've been having all these election tribunals in Nigeria in the past uh, almost two years now. I think there's still one or two to go. You know, they haven't finished. You know? They go to the court, petition, and they, 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 they declare who won or who didn't win, and they, they appeal again. And finally, it goes to the highest court of the land, the Supreme Court. And at the Supreme Court, whatever is decided there is what? Is what? That's it. You can't go any higher. Well, the throne of grace is God's own Supreme Court. And it's a supreme court that judges the entire universe. And I remember something God said to me many years ago. He said, bring anything the devil has decided against you. Bring anything spiritual, physical, financial that the enemy has decided against you. Made all his pronouncements against you. And God said, bring it to the throne room. Because the highest judge is there. Hallelujah. And God said, whatever I decide is what will rule. Amen, somebody. <laughs> and, and you think with, 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 with an information like that, people will rush there. People will rush to this place. People will be eager to go there when there's anything, anything, any situation. But alas, it's not so. It's not so. And when people do go there, they don't come boldly. They come fearfully. They come wondering, is it going to happen? Let's try prayer, they say. Uh -uh, you don't try prayer, you do prayer. Because whatever you try, that means you are putting an element of gambling into it. It may work, 
it will not work so let's try it and when someone says let's try this that means they're already making plans for alternative no there's no alternative are you hearing what I'm saying somebody this is very very important now notice that let us therefore come boldly to where to the throne of grace and what's going to happen there that we may obtain mercy and find grace to do what to help in the time of need oh Jesus and ladies and gentlemen because of the blood of Jesus that has opened a new and a living way into the very presence of God for you as a child of God you can come the throne of grace is open 24 7 anytime 2 a.m. 1 a.m. 1 p.m. 5 p.m. It's never closed. The door is open. Somebody can get help tonight. Somebody can get help at midnight. Somebody can get help 2 a.m. in the morning. When every man's help will be closed. Even when you call your neighbor, they say, I know, me, I can't come out too. But the throne room is always open. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help is waiting for somebody. 24 hours of the day. Think about that. Sometimes things are going on, you call police, they say, Bra no, no, no petrol. <laughs> Rapid response, no petrol in the van. So man will disappoint. Man will do something. Oh, but hear me, child of God, there's a throne of grace. A place where God is waiting on behalf of his people to do something. Can somebody say amen? Amen. And it's open all the time. Now, what's going to make the difference? Very simple. Confidence. Confidence to come there. That's a song we used to sing years ago. We sing it once in a while, but we're going to start singing again. Father, we have confidence by the blood of Jesus. To come into the place where you are. To come into the place where you are. By the new and living way. We enter into your holy place. We come to worship you with our hearts. We've come to worship you with all our heart. We come to seek your face with our hearts. We come to seek your face with all our heart. Can somebody say amen? amen. Whoa, hallelujah. That song is still relevant today. Father, we have confidence. Now somebody lift up that hand tonight and say, Lord, I have confidence. That's why I'm coming into that throne room tonight. By the new and the living way. Through the blood of Jesus. Thank you for mercy by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for grace by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for audience by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for attention by the blood of Jesus. I don't come with my own understanding. I don't come on my own auspices. I don't come because of who I am. But I come by the blood of Jesus. I have confidence God. Because you invited me to come. And I come to receive. I come to obtain. And Father I am not living empty hand because the throne room the throne of grace is the place of help it's the place of possibilities it's a place where God can take control it's a place where God can turn anything around for me it's a place for the helpless it's a place when I don't know what to do it's a place when the enemy is almost knocking me over father I have confidence and I come by the blood of Jesus I come as I am I come broken I come sad I come weak but I'm not gonna live the same way because in your presence 
something is going to happen to me. Uh, something is going to change in my life. Something is going to change around me. I have this confidence uh, in the name of Jesus. I carry everything I cannot handle. I carry every situation that's going out of the way. I carry every circumstance that is about to run me over. Father, I have confidence in the neighbor yonder by the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus that there is an answer. There is a solution. There is a way out in Emokoya. Ruste bakaya mande kote keta pode makataya. Ruste makia nana kaya. Reba koste munde kaya. La ke more basaya de de bakora. You said when I do not know how to pray as I ought. That you have sent me another comforter. The mighty Holy Spirit. Rima makosata. Who will help me. I have a helper. I have a helper right now. Rapa Kose Taka Modekea. I have confidence and I have a helper. Neka Tara Bokoyata. Rasika Mande Kosa Bakaya. Holy Spirit. I pour out my heart tonight. Lake Bateke Tare Mokoya. Lapa Kose Beke Take None Mange Deke Yanda Gonde Boko Yanda.
that hand and thank him. Oh God, I give you praise. 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 Lift up that hand and thank him. I'm telling you. in this room needed a powerful intervention and you've got it. Somebody in this room, I did not, I'm teaching, but the Spirit of God said, get in there. Because somebody needed God to step into something. I don't know who you are, but I got news for you. He has stepped in. He has stepped in. He has stepped in. You lift up your hand and thank him for it. He has stepped in. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's about. But one thing is said, I should tell you, he has stepped in. What you couldn't do, what nobody could do. You've worried your head. You've run up and down. Ah, come boldly to the throne of grace. The throne of grace. Mercy is available. Mercy is available. Mercy is available. Oh, just lift up that hand. Say, Father, I receive that. I receive that mercy beyond, beyond what I deserve. Beyond what I expect. Ah, Jesus. Tell him, thank you, Lord. I receive that mercy. I receive it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the joy of New Testament prayer. Filled with the Holy Ghost. He's our divine helper. Amen, somebody. Lift up your hand again and say, Lord, I received that intervention. You watching by television, a divine move has just taken place. I, I didn't orchestrate that. Lift up your hand again and say, I received divine intervention. Say it again, I received divine intervention. And I receive it right now. Amen. So you stay open to the Holy Ghost. My God, that's, that's another dimension. But notice again, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. Lift up your right hand say, Heavenly Father, all the mercy that I need every mercy of heaven in the name of Jesus I receive it now all the mercy that I need and remember mercy is what you can never do for yourself say it again all the mercy of heaven that I need in my life that I need in my family I receive it by faith. I receive it in the Holy Ghost. All the help. All the grace to help. That I ever need in my life. That I ever need in the days ahead. That I'll need tomorrow. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. And somebody shout a big amen. He's a pretender. Do we pray like this only once? No. You can't. 
Because the enemy will come out through another way. But the important thing is to be alert. Is to know the word on the inside of you. Because once it's there, it will always come out. Lift up your hands. Say, I have a divine helper. His name is the Holy Spirit. And he helps me to intercede. In dimensions that I cannot do on my own. And when he prays through me. As I yield to him. Results follow. Supernatural results follow. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout a big amen. Oh, I tell you, I tell you, it, 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 it's, just, it's just powerful. So, what we're trying to see here is this. God invites us to come. And with every invitation, there is already a result. Attached to every invitation, call unto me, I will answer and I will show you. Come boldly to the throne of grace, you will obtain mercy and find grace. So with every invitation, there is an answer attached. So the only reason people don't get answers, they don't accept the invitation. Did you hear me somebody? Because God cannot lie. And that's why when God finds a man, a woman, a people that understand this principle, with every invitation, there is an answer attached. The only reason you don't get the answer is if you don't accept the invitation. If you don't do it. It is not a trial and error thing. Amen somebody. Glory be to God. I tell you. That just gets me excited. Now very quickly. Let's go back to John 16. John 16. Look at it with me one more time. John 16 and verse 23. My, my, my. Sorry, let's look at my looking at John 16. I beg your pardon. 23 and 24 again. In that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will do what? He will give it to you. We're talking about the name of Jesus. Ask the Father in my name. I'm not going to be here. But I'm leaving my name behind. My name becomes my delegated authority. And what Jesus is literally saying here is this. When you go to the Father in my name, it will be like I went to the Father on your behalf. I'll say that again. If you go to the Father in my name, it will be like I went to the Father on your behalf. Because his name represents his person. Are you getting what I'm saying? And what you begin to see in the book of Acts, for example... Is that everywhere the disciples went, catch this, everywhere they went, using the name of Jesus, they saw the same results, they saw the same miracles happen, as if Jesus was physically there. Yet he was not physically there. But in his name, results happen as if he was physically there. It simply means... He has delegated authority through his name. Now, if that is there, let's see some things that is so important in prayer. Some very important things here. Now go me to the book of Acts chapter 3, please. And also Philippians chapter 2. I believe this is so important. Listen to me. Prayer is not just how much you can shout. Prayer is not how much you can shake. Like some people, they want to shake head, shake head. Prayer is not, that's not prayer. Prayer begins with your confidence in something, in him. And especially in his name. Which has become the delegate of authority of his person. It's so important. Now, also Mark 16. Let me show you all this together. What are we talking about? We're talking about answered prayer tonight. 
How do you connect with answered prayer? Let's start first of all with Mark 16. Hallelujah. And this weekend, that's all we're going to be talking about prayer. Oh, glory be to God. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. We'll see this. Notice as Jesus prepared to leave the earth, he has finished his assignment. Three years assignment. Well, three years he finished his assignment. There was no time allotted. And when I was teaching leadership the other day, I mentioned this to, to our leaders. Jesus, when he left this earth, when he was crucified and left this earth, the Bible says he was 33 years old. Yet up to the age of 30, he never did one miracle. There was no ministry. It's amazing. Then he finished ministry at 33. So he only had three years of ministry. But in those three years, it shook everywhere. And so this is what we said. This man had 30 years of preparations for three years of manifestation. I repeat that. 30 years of preparation for three years of manifestation. And what does that simply mean to us? What you put in in preparation matters. It's not how you run later. How you prepare, how you get ready, the things you learn, the things you pick up matter. In your prayer life, the things you learn, the things you pick up, the things you, you, you learn to, to put into your spirit. The scriptures on prayer, the confidence you build about the God you're going to call upon, they matter. Prayer is not just shouting, shouting, shouting. And people shout, shout, shout. There's nothing shouting is doing. They say, okay, let's now all bring handkerchief and begin to wave. So that God will see us from heaven. Who told you he was blind? And when handkerchief doesn't do, go and buy oil somewhere and put this. All kinds of things. Are, you know, because people are just trying. But if they will spend the time to prepare like Jesus did, you find that manifestation becomes easy. I'm telling you. Getting results become easy when preparation is fully in place. But to just rush through it, you know, and say, ha, ah, when we get to the night VG or the monthly prayer, everything will be solved. It's a lie. Thirty years of preparation for three years of ministry. And yet he did mighty things. In fact, I believe very well, God did not give Jesus a time frame to finish his ministry. But he finished ahead of time. He finished ahead of time. Because he was fully prepared. Amen, somebody. So, so uh, what did I ask you to open? Mark 16. So, look at Mark 16. He's preparing to go back to heaven. Verse 15. And he said unto them, that is to his disciples, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be what? Shall be damned. Now look at verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. This is for us. The believer. This is not even for the world. Those who believe in him. And this is the confidence that we have in him. It's not for everybody. This is for us. This is family matter. And this is what he said to those who believe in him. In my name. Uh oh. John 16. He that to have you asked nothing in my name. Because whatever you ask the father in my name. Jesus mentions again. About the importance of knowing his name. And especially understanding. That his name represents his delegated authority. My God. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on who? On the sick. And they shall recover. How? 
in my name. Not by voodoo or hoodoo. <laughs> Not by any special application of any other thing, but in my name. There has to be something in that connection with manifestation. Now notice verse 19. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Jesus went away. But notice he had said, in my name. Verse 20. And they, the disciples, went forth and preached everywhere. And the Bible tells us, the Lord walking with them. Hey, hey, wait a minute. But I thought the Bible just said Jesus went to heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Yes, he did. But he delegated his authority in his name. How was he going about walking with them every time they spoke his name? And ladies and gentlemen, he's still doing that today. That there's confidence in that name confidence in the authority and the power in that name Jesus will always show up and for prayer to be answered that is something that is so vital the Lord walking with them and what and confirming the word whatever they said in his name with signs what following Hallelujah. Now, Philippians chapter 2, very quickly. This is the confidence that we have in Him. And this becomes a confidence that we have in His name. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. My, my, my. Philippians chapter 2. Notice this. This is very, very important. Many believers today have lost confidence. They don't even know what the name stands for. They think the name of Jesus just uh, in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. For heaven's sake, that is not the purpose of the name of Jesus. It's more powerful than that. You're underutilizing the name. It's not just the end of a prayer. Goodness. Philippians chapter 2, please. Oh, glory be to God. Begin to read there from verse 9. This was what happened after Jesus obeyed God and went to the cross, died on the cross, and on the third day he was raised up. Thank God Easter is just around the corner. A reminder that up from the grave he arose. The stone has been rolled away. Amen. Where's that book? We, we, had, we had a new book we just brought out. Everybody needs to get that book. Get it. You know, the Bible says Jesus rolled away his own stone. No? So don't you say roll away your own stone too. And you can do it. Living in the power of the risen Christ. Fantastic book. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. Roll away your stone. His own has been rolled away. An example for us. So notice that. It says, wherefore God hath highly exalted him. That's what happened when Jesus went to the cross, obeyed, suffered, and died. Mm, my, my, my. Suffered and died, and it looked that like it was over, but it's never over. Listen to me. Every time you obey God, it may look like it's over. No, it's just beginning. Because obedience is the key to rising up. Always remember that. Just beginning. When he rose up, Bible says God had highly exalted him and given him what? A name. Which is what? Above every name. Underline that in your Bibles, please. The name of Jesus is a major key to answered prayer. And you must take time to build your knowledge of the authority and the power in that name into your life, into your prayer time. God gave him a name which is above every name that at the name of, uh, sorry, let's just say verse 9 first, a name which is above every name 
I was reading many years ago a little book by by Oral Roberts and he said if God has given Jesus a name above every name he said name anything that has a name the name of Jesus is above it sickness is a name the name of Jesus is above it problem is a name the name of Jesus is above it hallelujah bondage is a name the name of Jesus is above it debt is a name the name of Jesus is above it oppression is a name the name of Jesus is above it giving him a name above every name anything that has a name that is a name higher than that name hmm. that's why Jesus said in my name <laughs> the name that is higher than any name so when you go to God in prayer when you go to the throne of grace in prayer and say heavenly father you ask me in Jeremiah I said call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and much. God I come in this situation that I'm facing or is facing me right now I can't handle it like in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 when the children of Israel were faced by those three enemy nations Jehoshaphat prayed, said we have no might or power against this great company have you ever been there overwhelmed on every side don't know which way to turn Oh, but thank God there is a way. Ah, there is a way and there is a name that can lift you above every situation. They said, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Ah, yeah, yeah. Listen to me. You may be facing some of the most craziest things in your life. Things that outnumber you, overwhelm your mind. You don't know how to come out from left or right or under or above. But I'm telling you there is a name. <laughs> a name that is above that problem. And when you come to God in that name. And you ask God to do something in that name on your behalf. Jesus himself will show up. And he will open that door. Jesus himself will show up. And he will roll that burden away. Jesus himself will show up. And when there was no answer, he will give an answer there. Hallelujah. And something will happen. This is the confidence that we have in him. Oh Jesus Because his name Is above every name Think about it What name Of what situation is perplexing you right now What is the name Of whatever it is that has been Bugging your mind what is the name of any situation that has been eaten away at your, at, your, at your feet, so to say, as they say? There is a name above that, that thing. And then Philippians 4, the next verse tells us this. This is powerful. Verse 10. That at the name of Jesus. <laughs> that at the name, at the mention of that name. Every knee should bow. And like our robot said, is anything that has a name has a knee. <laughs> anything that has a name has a knee. If it's an entity, it has a knee. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, his knee must bow. That means it must crumble. It must come down. Hallelujah. And that's the privilege we have because Jesus did not give his name to the world. He gave it to the church. To his people. And what did he give it for us for? To, to adore it? No, to use it. In my name. Use it. Use it. Glory be to God. Use it to approach the Father. Use it to confront the enemy. Use it to tell the devil no more. In the name of Jesus, no more. In the name of Jesus, that will not happen again in my family. In the name of Jesus, you will not push me down again, devil. In the name, is somebody getting what I'm
I'm saying here. You rise up with a boldness in that name. You rise up with a new authority in that name. And listen to me. God showed me one day. I'll never forget this. I was way years ago. I was meditating on the power of the name of Jesus. And the Lord showed me a vision. And what I saw in that vision shook me. Because Jesus said to me. He said every time you stand up. And you begin to use my name. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. He said it's as if every time you call that name and speak it with more boldness. And what I saw in the vision shook me. Because when I was doing that. It's like Jesus came out of his name. I am calling Jesus name here. He comes out of his name. And he stands in front of me. And it's like every time I said it he said bow. Bow. And all of a sudden he said to me, He said, When you begin to use my name, the battle is no longer yours. <laughs> it's now mine. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. And if you as a believer know that, listen to me, your days of cowering and fear. Hey, what do we do now? Hey, who do we run to now? Those days are over. The days of just saying, listen to me, nobody says you have all the answers in your small head. Of course there will be some things that will be bigger than your head. But just because they are, they are not bigger than your Jesus. Amen. Did you hear me somebody? Some things you don't know what to do, how to handle. Just because you don't know, you don't have the wherewithal, you don't have the resources, but they are not bigger than your Jesus. And in his name, something will change. Something will happen. Somebody lift up that hand. Say in the name of Jesus. I call in the name of Jesus. I speak in the authority of the name of Jesus. And I call for help in the name of Jesus. I receive intervention in the name of Jesus. I receive victory in the name of Jesus. Whatever has been too difficult. Whatever has been beyond my ability. In the name of Jesus, I receive victory. I receive victory. I receive victory. I receive victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank him for it. Glory be to God. He said in my name, every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess. That Jesus is Lord. See when you call his name in prayer. Jesus himself made it clear. There cannot be two masters in the same boat. When you are declaring his name. He is becoming Lord. And like one sticker we did many years ago. Jesus is Lord. There is no controversy. <laughs> there is still no controversy. <laughs> Can somebody declare Jesus, Jesus is Lord? Jesus. Say it again, Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Jesus. Say it again, Jesus, 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 Jesus is Lord. Jesus. You gotta be speaking that in your house, speaking that in your office, speaking that when you face problem. Jesus is Lord over this thing. Jesus is Lord over this situation. Because at the mention of his name, every knee shall bow. Oh, glory be to God. John 16, 23. He that to have you asked nothing in my name. He didn't say you have not struggled. He didn't say you have not shouted. He said you have not asked in my name. So it's possible to be shouting and doing all and shaking and gyrating and burning candle and never ask anything in his name. And now you simply do is in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. That is not using the name of Jesus. That is the religious way of doing it. And Satan has kept too many people at that level. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. That's all. But he said, He that will have you ask nothing in the authority of my name. Ask. And you shall be denied, right? No, you can't be denied. Because he's the owner of everything. Ask in my name and you shall receive. 
Somebody lift up that hand. Say in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whose I am and whom I serve, I shall receive. I shall receive. I shall receive. In the name of Jesus. Lift up that hand and thank God for that name. Come on, come on, come on. Thank him for that name. That name in prayer. That name in your mouth. That name in every situation. That name walking, walking, walking. This signs shall follow in my name. You want to see miracle signs in your prayer life. Then your confidence in that name. Oh my God. It's not a shout. It's a knowing. I know that I know that I know. Oh God. I know that I know. Ah, the Jesus whose I am and whom I serve. The Jesus who saved me. The Jesus who died for me 2,000 years ago. The Jesus who saved me. Come on, you, you got to know that. You got to let every devil know that you know. You know who you serve. You know who you are saved from and then by. You know who has made a way for you. Glory be to God. And when you come before the throne of God in his name, heaven will stand attention. David Eagles wrote a song. He says, heaven stands attention at the mention of his name. Demons tremble at the mention of his name. Oh, hell must obey because they know. Somebody said the name of Jesus is my authority. The name of Jesus is my guarantee. The name of Jesus is my authority to receive it in prayer. I have confidence in that name. I know that I know that I know that God has answered my prayer because I use the name of Jesus. I know that I know that I know that Satan lost the battle. Say time you have lost the battle because I say so in the name of Jesus. I say so in the name of Jesus. I say so. You have lost the battle. Say time you have lost the battle. Say time you have lost the battle. Every stronghold of hell you have lost the battle because I say so in the name that is above every name. The of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Oh, lift up that hand and thank. Oh, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, open your mouth. It's a new day, child of God. It's a new day, child of God. I'm telling you, at the mention of his name, ah, demons tremble. All hell must obey. <laughs> Oh, heaven stands at attention when I mention that name. Somebody say, Thank God for the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is my master key to receiving in prayer. And I shall receive in prayer because my confidence, my faith is in the name of Jesus. I am not moved by what I see, I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by how I feel. I speak in the authority of the name of Jesus. I said, victory is mine. Oh, somebody shouted, victory is mine. Victory is mine. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ah, victory is mine. Amen. Give him a big hand clap, will you? <laughs> Hallelujah. My God, I wish we had more time. But this is our prayer weekend. Don't forget, our next meeting will be on Saturday. Okay? Thank you for watching today's video. This channel is brought to you by HopeLify.org to inspire you to become the very best that you were designed to be. Remember, a few simple keys, mastered and consistently applied, are often all we need to excel in each area of life.
You can help make this channel even better in three simple ways. One, subscribe to receive more videos. Two, leave a comment below to let me know what resonates with you from today's video. Or three, suggest a topic for a video that you will like for us to feature on this channel. Visit Hopelify.org to post your own inspirational content.